dear friends, welcome to the serial lectures on traditional Chinese culture. Today we will get started with the first lecture, Harmony and Symbolism: The Open Sesame to the Treasure House of Traditional Chinese Culture. As is known to all, there are four ancient civilizations in the world: in China, Egypt, Babylon, and India. Among them, Chinese civilization is the only one which is not interrupted. So China is reputed as the single oldest. Uninterrupted civilization in the world. The Rosetta Stone was first discovered by Napoleon's soldiers, which was the origin of Egyptology. The ancient Egypt was wiped out by the ancient Roman Empire. And the modern Egyptians are not ancient Egyptians. Modern Egyptians believe in Islam. They cannot read the pictographs on the Rosetta Stone. Now the Rosetta Stone is on display in British Museum. Modern Indians are not. Ancient Indians, either. Modern Indians are Aryans, actually the descendants of invaders. Here is the Behis tomb inscription, with cuneiforms of Sumerians. They look like the footprints of sparrows. The ancient Babylon also died out. The modern Iranians and the Iraqis are not Babylonians. Of course, they could not read the cuneiforms of Sumerians. However, Chinese people could read the ancient classics written three thousand years ago. We can read the Analects of Confucius, written in clerical script, the official script. To learn and to practice what is learned time and again is pleasure, isn't it? To have friends coming from afar is happiness, isn't it? Isn't it amazing? In the long course of historical development, Chinese people have created a treasure house of traditional culture. China is literally known as the Middle Kingdom. What are the typical Chinese elements? I believe you can enumerate a host of Chinese elements: Chinese North, the Great War, the Nine Dragon War, bamboo slips, archaeological site, calligraphy, the Running Hand, regular script, cursive hand, etc. And the pictographs inscribed on tortoise shells or beast bones, actually on tortoise belly, abdomen, not the back. Turtle back is too hard to carve. The three main ideological streams of China are Confucianism, Taoism. And Buddhism. Confucianism 
is the root of traditional Chinese ideology. Classic of Changes is the number one book of Confucianism. The lofty ideal is to enter the world. Buddhism was introduced into China in the first century. Buddhism is the pursuit of wisdom. Taoism is the only indigenous religion of China, the native religion. The lofty ideal is to escape the world, to be detached and secluded. The four national pieces of China are martial arts, traditional Chinese medicine, Beijing opera, and calligraphy. Martial arts, Kung Fu, and Tai Chi are terrific. And we have martial arts, martial ethics, and martial artistry. Traditional Chinese medicine. We have four methods of diagnosis. Feeling the, feeling the patient's pulse. As to treatment. Besides herbal medicine, we have acupuncture and moxibustion. Massage, cupping and scraping. Beijing opera. The painted facial patterns have almost become the emblem of Chinese culture. Symbolism is essential. Symbolism works in Beijing opera. Calligraphy is regarded in China as the art of writing, evolving from oracles on tortoise shells or beast bones to inscriptions on bronze objects, giant seal character, lesser seal character, clerical script, regular script, cursive hand, and running hand. Many foreigners would like to buy products which are typically Chinese. What are the typically Chinese products? Tea, silk, and porcelain. China is the homeland of tea. Tea in China falls into several categories. Green, black, Oolong, jasmine, and brick tea. Oolong tea is half fermented, keeping people fit and slim. Brick tea is tightly pressed. Silk, silkworm breeding, embroidery, and the silk road are fascinating. Porcelain, the country and porcelain share the same word, China. Porcelain is the calling card of China, such as the blue and white porcelain, Famille Rose, Saladin, white porcelain, crackleware, overglazed and underglazed ware. There is a saying, poetically perch on the globe. As to poetic life, we may appreciate traditional costumes, Chinese cuisine, ancient architecture, and traditional festivals. Traditional Chinese costume is hierarchical, 
yet graceful. We have Chang San, Tang style apparel, Chinese tunic suit and wax printing. Chinese cuisine, Chinese culinary art is creative and stylistic. We have eight regional cuisines, and the pork-marked woman's bean curd, Beijing roast duck, and beggar's chicken are really delicious. Ancient architecture. The unmistakable characteristics of Chinese buildings include timber structure, north-south central axis, massive curved roof and a terrace, and exquisite decoration. Traditional Chinese festivals are deeply rooted in the farming culture, including Spring Festival, Lantern Festival, Pure Brightness, Double Fifth Festival, Double Seventh Festival, Mid Autumn Festival, Double Ninth Festival, Winter Solstice, and La Ba Festival. The artistic achievements are great, and we may appreciate Chinese ink painting, bronzeware, and classical gardens. Chinese ink painting is rather unique. Using the writing brush, black ink on snow white xuan paper. Sometimes the chickens and sweet cucumbers in the corners while the rest of the tableau is blank. Ancient bronzeware was the testimony to the brilliant civilization of the Bronze Age. Bronze articles were mostly made as sacrificial vessels used in ritual ceremonies held by imperial and aristocratic families to worship the heaven and earth. Chinese classical gardens are free, detached, and secluded, falling into four categories of imperial garden, private garden, landscape garden, and temple garden. A winding path may lead to places of seclusion. There are so many cultural aspects. Here comes the question. How to appreciate traditional Chinese culture? What is the key to the treasure house of traditional Chinese culture? If we are expected to choose two words to summarize the open sesame to the treasure house of traditional Chinese culture. What are the two words? To my understanding, the two words are harmony and symbolism. And we can use competition and realism to summarize Western culture. It was Zhang Zai of the North Song Dynasty who first put forward the saying, the complete harmony between man and nature. I will give you several examples to illustrate the two words. We will frequently come across the two words in the following examples. I'd like to begin with a painting, Three Vinegar Tasters. In the middle, we can see a vat of vinegar. Three tasters are sitting around the vat of vinegar. 
Confucius is having a sour look on his face. Buddha, in the middle, is wearing a bitter expression. Lao Tzu is smiling. Shall we try to interpret the painting? The painting is intended to be allegorical, and each of the three men represents one of the three teachings of China, Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism. The vinegar they are tasting represents the essence of life. Confucianism saw life as sour, in need of rules to correct the degeneration of people. The lofty ideal is to enter the world to rule the country. Buddhism saw life as bitter, dominated by pain and suffering. Taoism saw life as fundamentally good in its natural state. The lofty ideal is to escape the world, to be detached and secluded. Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism are the three main ideological streams of China. Here we can see Confucius, the great sage, Lao Tzu, the supreme patriarch, and Sakyamuni, the Buddha. Chinese people are very tolerant as to religion. In some places, the statues of Confucius, Lao Tzu, and Sakyamuni are enshrined together, side by side. Here we can see the Zhongyue Temple of Taoism, Songyang Academy of Confucianism, and Shaolin Monastery, the birthplace of Zen Buddhism, Zen Buddhism for meditation. Shaolin Monastery is famous for its martial arts. They are all located in Songshan Mountain in Central Plain, in Henan province. Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism coexist so harmoniously in Songshan Mountain. How to appreciate Chinese bronzeware? We can appreciate Chinese bronzeware from five aspects. Magnificent Shapes Chinese bronzeware took various shapes. Some were used to store wine, drink wine, store food, cook food, cook meat, or contain water, while others were used as musical instruments or weapons. The bronze articles were mostly made as sacrificial vessels used in ritual ceremony to worship the heaven and earth, embodying the complete harmony between man and nature. They could also be used as daily necessities or funerary objects. Exquisite motifs, such as animal mask pattern, dragon and a phoenix pattern, dragon and a cloud pattern, geometric pattern, thunder and a lightning pattern, etc. The designs of animals show respect to the nature. They embody the complete harmony between man and nature. Profound historical information. 
Usually, there is a story behind each piece of Brunswick. The Brahms articles are the testimony to the civilization of the Brahms age. Delicately inscribed scripts. Inscriptions on Brahms ware are very precious, valuable, and outstanding. There are not so many. Advanced casting techniques. Such as clay mold method, lost wax casting, and separate casting. Shall we appreciate some bronze articles? Tripod for Duke Mao was cast in late Western Zhou Dynasty, unearthed in Shanxi Province. Now on display in Taipei Palace Museum. Bronze steam was originally a cauldron used to cook meat, with three or four legs and two ears as handles. Later evolved into a ritual object, a symbol of social status. According to the rules of the Zhou Dynasty, the Emperor, the Son of Heaven, could use as many as nine things, and the Duke, aristocrat, could use seven things. The minister could use five, while the official below could use only three. There were stringent rules on the size and weight. The four-legged quadruped was also used together with tripod. It has two vertical ears as handles used in ancestral temple. It bears the longest inscriptions in extant bronze ware. 499 characters in all, vivid and true to life. This vessel is called Jia, cast in the Shang Dynasty. It is round-mouthed, made as a drinking cup used in memorial ceremony. It is solemn and magic in style. There is an animal mask pattern on it. Tao Tie is a legendary animal notorious for its greed for food. It has only a head with an extremely huge mouth. It does not have a body. It is so greedy that it has even eaten its own body. It is not clear why such a strange greedy beast was popularly used to decorate bronze ritual objects. One possible reason was probably to use its benevolent image to ward off evil. There are two short posts in the shape of mushroom or umbrella. When you drink, the two short posts will touch your nose. You may feel uncomfortable and have to drink slowly. Don't drink too much. The vessel is called Yu, cast in the Western Zhou Dynasty. It is used to contain wine with lid and handle. It is tube-shaped, different from the others, unique and mysterious. On the body, there is a relief of a cow head protruding. 
with two horns stretching out and two eyes shining. Xizun is the wine vessel cast in late spring and autumn period. It is in the shape of a buffalo. There are three holes on the back. The lids are missing. The middle hole actually is a pot used to contain wine. The two holes on both sides are used to contain hot water in order to heat the wine. It is a wine warmer. The design is marvelous and practical in use. There is a ring in the nose of the buffalo. It is valuable in scientific research because it indicates that at that time, people already knew if you wanted to control the buffalo, you should hold its nose. This utensil with a handle is known to archaeologists as yo, used to contain wine, with cannibal tiger, cast in the Shang Dynasty. It is artistically outstanding, with supernatural pattern. It features a human figure embracing a tiger, his bare feet on the hind paw of the tiger, his head in the tiger's mouth. The man's face bears no expression of pain or horror, suggesting that the man and the tiger are friends. Some archaeologists think that the man could be a wizard, and the tiger his assistant. The wine pot could be a magic instrument by means of which the wizard communicated with the supernatural world. In ancient times, wizards often exercised witchcraft under the influence of alcohol. Yan is the cooking utensil used to steam rice. It consists of two parts. The upper part is called zeng, used to put rice. The lower appliance is used to boil water, called li, with hollow legs. Modern steamer was invented by the ancient Chinese. How to appreciate Chinese painting? We can appreciate Chinese ink and wash from four arts, four essentials, poetry, calligraphy, painting, and seal engraving. Traditional Chinese painting is a combination in the same picture of the arts of poetry, calligraphy, painting, and seal engraving. Make it a rule to arrange them in the correct order. In the ancient times, most painters were also poets and calligraphers, like Su Dongpo. To the Chinese, painting in poetry and the poetry in painting has been one of the criteria for excellent works of art. Inscriptions and seal impressions help to explain the painter's ideas and sentiments and also add decorative beauty to the painting. Poetry, calligraphy, painting, and seal engraving supplement and enrich one another.
spring outing was the first landscape painting in the world, painted by Zhang Ziqian in the seventh century. While in the West, landscape painting started from Britain in the sixteenth century. Landscape painting was well developed, was fully developed in China, especially in the Song and the Yuan dynasties. Heaven, earth, and man are the three grades, embodying the complete harmony between man and nature. At the top notch place in Confucianism and Taoism, heaven and earth in front of man. Man is a grain in the vast sea. Landscape was the main subject, while man was the supplementary part. While in ancient Greek philosophy, man is the master of all beings in the universe, the most beautiful and essential part of the world is human body, naked or nude sculpture like David. Figure painting was well developed in the West. Landscape served as the background to make out the human body of minor importance. Chinese paintings disregard the limitations of proportion, perspective, and light adopting the shifting perspective, breaking away from the restriction of time and space, expressing what he wants. They include in their pictures both things which are far and the things which are near. They put forward the theories, making the form show the spirit Likeness in spirit resides in unlikeness. A painting should be something between likeness and unlikeness. While in Western paintings there are usually the fixed focal point, definite period of time, special venue, and a distinctive theme, realistic and three-dimensional, expressing what he sees. All in all, Chinese graphic art largely depends on lines, lines and brush strokes. Western oil painting on canvas is created by color and light. Xi Baishi is a celebrated contemporary artist, good at freehand brushwork. He is a versatile artist. He expressed his own understanding and originality. His shrimps are lifelike and abundant, with beard and nips. He does not paint shrimps as they are in nature. Only their essence has been shown on the tableau. Often he drew only one or two shrimps, leaving the rest of the tableau empty. Without water, still giving the feeling that everything is vibrant and alive and ethereal. Frogs croaking out of the stream is another case in point. With only a couple of swimming tadpoles, the artist vividly presents an animated world full of life and vitality.
Chinese cuisine is universally recognized as one of the great cuisines of the world, together with French cuisine and Turkish cuisine. Chinese food is one of the finest pleasures a visitor can experience in China. We have eight distinct regional cuisines. How to appreciate Chinese cuisine? Besides the traditional three aspects of color, aroma, and taste, we can also appreciate Chinese cuisine from the shape, container, sound, and symbolic meaning. We can appreciate the shape. The ingredients of a dish can be cut into slices, strips, shreds, cubes, dices, segments, grains, or minced. Some materials like turnip, radish, and potato can be carved into shapes of flowers and animals. Chinese characters of an auspicious nature can also be carved into food or vegetables, like fortune, wealth, longevity, and happiness. As to the container, we can appreciate the blue and white porcelain, familiar holes, underglazed, overglazed, saladum, crystalline glazed ware. We can even appreciate the sound. The sliced beef with onions on iron pan, the sliced beef is sizzling, hissing hot. Last but not least, we can probe into the symbolic meaning. Every dish has a beautiful name with profound cultural insight. Take the Confucius family dishes, for example. They died shark fin is symbolic of wealth. Shrimps wearing jade belts is symbolic of nobility. Eight immortals crossing the sea is symbolic of longevity. Dongpu braised pork is prepared over a slow fire with streaky pork and garnishes of onion, ginger, cooking wine, soy sauce, and sugar. The finished dish is bright red in color and tender and juicy in taste, yet without any feel of greasiness. This dish was named after Su Dongpo, a great poet of the Northern Song Dynasty. Legend goes that when Su Dongpo was in charge of the drainage work of the West Lake, he rewarded the workers with stewed pork. Su Dongpo told his family chef to send the pork and the wine to the workers. However, the cook misunderstood his meaning. The chef put the wine into the pork, and the stewed pork turned out to be extraordinarily tasty. People later named it Dongpo pork to commemorate this gifted and generous poet. The Confucius family dish Eight immortals crossing the sea and playing with our heart is a case in point. The so-called eight immortals symbolize longevity in Taoism 
and they are actually the eight ingredients: shrimp, abalone, shark fin, sea cucumber, fish maw, asparagus, fish bone, and ham. And the chicken in the middle represents our heart in Buddhism. And this is also the first dish of Confucian family banquet. Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism coexist peacefully in this dish and in China as well. I'd like to tell you a story about the poetic dishes. In the ancient times, there was a poor scholar. He was very poor. He had only a few coins in his pocket. However, his friends would come to visit him, and it would be his treat. He felt somewhat frustrated. Then he had an idea. He gave the coins to his wife and asked her to buy two eggs, some bean curd, and some scallion or shallot, and asked her to prepare four dishes. When his distinguished guests came, the first dish was put on the table. On the porcelain plate were some shallots and two egg yellow, two yolks. The scholar said the name of the dish was two golden Oreos seen amid willows green. The second dish was a line of egg white, and the name. A row of white egrets flies into the blue sky. The third dish was just some bean curd, and its name, my window, frames the snow-crowned western hill. And the most amazing was the last dish. It was a soup. On the boiling water, some egg shells were floating, and its name, beyond the door, lie the east-going ships. How poetic are those dishes? Actually, this is a poem, a quatrain written by Du Fu, a famous poet of the Tang Dynasty. Two golden Oreos seen amid willows green. A row of white egrets flies into the blue sky. My window frames the snow-crowned western hill. Beyond the door lie the east-going ships. Here is a genuine building. Left over from the Tang Dynasty, Nan Chan Temple in Mount Wu Tai, the preaching place of Bodhisattva of Great Wisdom. Wooden buildings could be easily damaged, especially by fire or war, so it is very precious. We can appreciate the architectural style of the Tang Dynasty. Gentle and slight slope, outstretched and elegant. Deep eaves, big corbel, thick pillars, wooden door and straight window lattice. In Japan, there are many such kind of buildings, looking solemn, grave. Simple and plain. Buildings in China, 
invariably rise from a terrace. The wooden frame has to be protected from any ingress of water. There is the saying, "Heaven covers and earth carries." The terrace represents the earth, and the roof symbolizes the heaven. Thus, we come to the recurrent theme of ancient Chinese philosophy: a complete harmony between man and nature. Heaven, earth. And men are the three grades. Timber structure refers to the extensive and predominant use of timber as a building material, in addition to bricks and tiles. By inserting the tenon into mortise, tenon is the square block, and mortise. Is the square hole. By inserting the tenon into the mortise, the building could be constructed without the use of a single nail or glue. Timber is not only easily available and transportable, but also practical and quake resistant. However, wooden buildings. Could easily be damaged, especially by fire or war. The ancient Greeks usually built stone structures, which could be well preserved. Many people would like to visit the Acropolis in Athens to have a look at the temples of Parthenon, Athena Nike, and. Erechtheum with goddess columns, and the Pantheon and the Colosseum in Rome. The roofs of Chinese buildings are usually large and massive, and often curved. The eaves are often slightly upturned. A practical function. Of upturned roof is to ensure enough light while making it easy to carry off rainwater. It also has aesthetic value to achieve an air of weightlessness and the illusion of floating. The roofs of palaces are covered with glazed tile. Sometimes, when you are standing in front of an ancient building, you may wonder in which dynasty was it constructed. Sometimes you can make the judgment just according to the eaves. If the roofs are gentle, outstretched, and elegant, maybe the building was constructed in the Tang Dynasty. If the eaves are slightly upturned, may be built in the Song Dynasty. If the roofs are high rising, in the Ming and the Qing Dynasties, so the eaves are becoming more and more upturned, which is the general tendency. Partly stilted houses can be found in a mountainous area in the west of Hunan Province, at the foot of a hill or overlooking a river. Earthen building is a large multi-story building in the mountainous region of Fujian Province. For large community living and defense, built with rammed earth and a wood frame. Most hackers lived with each other in the mountains. The houses are huge, 
they can be 10 meters tall and more than 60 meters in diameter. They are enclosed by very thick walls made of compacted earth. Windows are usually very small. They look like fortified castles built to provide protection against invasion of bandits and wild animals. Here is the typical layout of a round earthen building. The first floor is always the kitchen. The second floor becomes a storeroom for food and furniture. The third floor and above are bedrooms. The courtyard is located in the middle, while ancestral hall is located at the center of the courtyard. Clan members, as many as three to five hundred people, live in this single house. The Americans once suspected that it was the missile launch site. Does it resemble a missile launch site? Shall we come to Tai Chi, the Chinese martial art? Here we can see the Tai Chi diagram, the two fish, based on the negative and a positive theory. Shall we make an analysis of the Tai Chi diagram, diagram of the universe? The outer circle itself represents a whole, namely everything in the universe. Tai Chi is the supreme ultimate. It is the source of all things in the universe. White fish represents young elements and is generally shown as rising on the left. Black fish represents yin elements and is depicted as Descending on the right. There is a small dot of the different color at the fullest point, indicating how each will transform into the other. Yin and yang function by reciprocal action. Yin and yang are mutually rooted. They mutually wax and wane and mutually transform. Yin and yang are the two polar opposites into which all things can be classified. Thus, dark and light, life and death, male and female, good and evil, strong and weak, are all manifestations of yin and yang. Have you noticed that there are no straight lines? What we can see are all curves. Being circular is one of the important characteristics of shadow boxing. Performing shadow boxing is just like drawing circles again and again while being smooth and round is a major criterion. Shadow boxing draws the elegant circles of life through moving, jumping, dodging, and unfolding so as to turn exterior circles of energy into interior circles of energy. Once the interior circles of energy is established, how can disease attack you? As to the origin of Tai Chi, legend goes that Zheng Sanfeng of the Song Dynasty created Tai Chi, but 
there is no evidence in historical records. Zhang Sanfeng on Mount Wudang created Tai Chi after he had witnessed a fight between a crane and a snake. The crane could not catch the snake because the snake always moved in curves. Tai Chi is known as shadow boxing with the imaginary enemy. Each movement has its defensive or offensive meaning. A practitioner is expected to regulate the physical body, breathing, and the mind to achieve harmony in body, the external work, evenness in breathing, internal training, and calmness in mind, internal training. There are three aspects of martial arts. Martial arts, martial ethics, and martial artistry. As to martial arts, Kung Fu, martial is concerned with bloody war and soldiers, while arts reminds us of the beauty, the nature, and all the good. The two words are mingled in one single term, including much cultural insight. In terms of martial ethics, Wu Shu is more than Kung Fu. It embodies a profound philosophy reflected in the martial ethics. Martial ethics require that a person exercise self-restraint, never abusing his abilities to seek personal gratification or to oppress those weaker than himself. He should seek to uphold justice, remain fearless in the face of brutality, and cultivate modesty and a spirit of cooperation. Besides martial arts and martial ethics, we also have martial artistry. Wu Shu is long associated with dance. It has a beautifying effect on the physique and a positive effect on the character. It is artistic and charismatic. Have you noticed that in the traditional Chinese festivals, people salute and greet with hands folded and clasped? This is the ancient etiquette. It has profound cultural insight. The right hand is a fist or a punch, symbolizing force, violence, and martial arts. The left hand is a palm. The thumb is bending, indicating that I will always be modest and humble. I will never try to be number one. The four fingers symbolize morality, ethics, beauty, wisdom, and artistry respectively. The left palm holding the right fist signifies that we should control the martial arts with martial ethics and martial artistry. Traditional Chinese medicine is based on the balance of yin and yang, embodying the complete harmony between man and nature. 
Shall we come to the basic principles of TCM? Holistic view. The concept of holism. Treatment based on syndrome differentiation. Unlike Western anatomical model, which divides the physical body into parts, traditional Chinese medicine is very holistic. Health is perceived as harmonious interaction of the entities, while disease is interpreted as a disharmony in interaction. Thus, disease is caused by the weakening of the body as a whole. TCM cures disease by reinforcing and stimulating the internal strengths. TCM may take a longer time to cure a disease, but it strengthens the overall health of a patient. The treatment is to balance the eight principal syndromes. Shall we try to differentiate the eight principal syndromes? Differentiation of yin and yang syndrome is the general principle of the other six syndromes. Yin syndromes include interior, code, and deficiency conditions. Yang syndromes include exterior, heat, and access conditions. Differentiation of exterior and interior syndrome is used to locate the disease. Exterior syndromes are located in the skin and hair. Interior syndromes refer to disorders in the interior organ, in the internal organ, blood vessel, and bone. Syndrome differentiation of cold and heat, underactivity and overactivity helps to identify the specific nature of a disease. Cold syndrome is insufficient yang. Heat syndrome, hyperfunction of yang due to yin deficiency. Underactivity syndrome, both yin and yang are insufficient. Overactivity syndrome, both yin and yang are excessive. Here we have got a metaphor. To boil the water, we have water in the kettle and a flame in the stove. If the water level is moderate, and the flame is also moderate. Everything is going well and the man is healthy. If there is too much water and the flame is too low, there appears the syndrome of cold, which is negative. If there is too little water and the flame is too high, there appears the syndrome of heat, which is positive. If there is too little water and the flame is too low, there appears the syndrome of underactivity. The man is lacking in vitality, lacking in vital energy. He may possibly die. If there is too much water and the flame is too high, there appears the syndrome of overactivity. 
and the doctor is expected to balance the yin and the yang, the negative and the positive as a whole. Herbal medicine is used to counteract excessive cold or heat, dampness or dryness, and restore balance of yin and yang, rather than just treat one particular disease. The drugs have four properties, four characteristics: cold, cool, warm, and hot. Mulberry leaves are cold. Chrysanthemum is cool. Ginseng is warm, and the ginger is hot. The painted facial patterns have almost become the emblem of Chinese culture. Many countries design posters. Using the painted facial patterns to signal a year of Chinese culture, they are painted directly on face, different from masks. The painted facial patterns apply to two rules, Jing and Chou. Jing is the male character, Chou is the clown. Showing the character's age, profession, and personality by using different colors. Each color symbolizes a certain characteristic. Red for valor, bravery, and loyalty, like Guan Yu. A black face. Signifies the person is straightforward and upright, somewhat rude. Zhang Fei has a facial design in the shape of a butterfly, an artistic masterpiece. A white face identifies the person as crafty and evil, for a cunning and deceitful character. Like Cao Cao, over one thousand painted facial patterns are used, just like the fingerprints. Each pattern is designed for a specific historical figure, and never and can never be used for another. Acting in Beijing Opera. Is not subjected to the limitations of time and space. Here, symbolism is essential. Some activities in everyday life cannot be possibly reproduced on the stage. Beijing opera gives expression to them in a symbolic way. Thus. Particular bodily movements signify opening a door, entering a room, going upstairs, climbing a mountain, or wading across a stream. Circling the stage, whip in hand, suggests riding a horse. Walking in a circle indicates a long journey. Four soldiers and four generals flanking both sides of the stage represent an army several thousand strong. Two men somersaulting under a spotlight shows how they are groping and fighting in the dark. A performer holding an oar. Or paddle and doing knee bends to simulate a heavy swell demonstrates traveling on the boat. At the crossroad is a case in point. The opera 
describes a fight at an inn, at a tavern. Although the fight happens at night, the stage is brightly lit. Yet the audience is able to sense that it is a pitch dark night from the actors' performances. Stealthy movements. Sometimes one man's sword swishes down only a few inches away from the other's face, yet the latter feels nothing, thus producing a breathtaking yet humorous effect. Another example is Orton River. The story describes a young nun who leaves the nunnery to pursue her lover. On stage, there is neither water nor boat, but through the performance of the young woman and the old boatman, the audience is able to obviously see that the stage is a river. The boat sways forward. All the way, the girl complains that the boat is too slow, while the old boatman keeps teasing her, keeps making fun of her about her anxiety to see her lover. The performance is full of wit and humor. So much for today. Thank you very much.